A question I get asked all the time, and I've been really resistant to answer, is Next.js versus Spellkit in 2024. And I want to say at the outset of this video that I think both of these frameworks are excellent. I really like what both of them have done. I'm a huge fan of the server component model. I'll kind of talk about why in this video. I think it makes a lot of sense. And while it is new, it is tricky. There is going to be some learning that goes into it. I think it will ultimately create a much better full stack experience for everyone. But we do have to stick our heads into this like, okay, we're doing things in full stack now. Like that's kind of the way all of these meta frameworks are moving. And while I personally really like that, I know a lot of people in the comments, a lot of people I've talked to don't. So that is definitely a thing that's happening here. But I do think both of these frameworks are really good, but they are very different. And I think the way that they do things is very different. The mental model is very different. Uh, and today I want to give you guys the reasoning behind why I prefer Svelkit's model over Next.js's model. I think the best place to start is going to be going over how each one handles data fetching. And I want to visualize how this sort of works. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, I do have to give a sort of caveat here, and this is why meta frameworks can be tricky and why I think a lot of people get so confused with all this stuff on the client versus the server, because this line, like this is, this is a hard line these days because we have stuff which will only ever run on the server. And I'll talk about that, what that is in a second here, but we also have stuff which runs, which can run on the client, but won't always run on the client, like client components and page .svelte files they are technically like you can think of these like client components they'll run on the client uh, which is the user's browser but the problem is with ssr they will generally be run and pre-rendered on the server so they will actually still be kind of run on the server at the same time but for the sake of simplifying this a little bit we're just going to say the client is any of the reactive stuff which gets shipped down to the user the state variables the effects all that stuff which they can interact with and we're just going to simplify and say that page.ts and client components are only run on the client, even though, yes, they are SSR'd. I know it's just it's kind of a tricky distinction these days. Um, so to begin, let's talk about data fetching. And let's first talk about how Next.js does data fetching. Um, and this is going to be entirely in the server component model. If we look at the server component model, the server component itself can talk directly to our database. And Drizzle is how we're communicating with our database. So our server component can call Drizzle directly. We can fetch data in here. But the trick is this can also render out UI. We can also put a lot of our UI and we can take that data that we fetch in just a top level await in our server component and we can print that out on the screen. I will talk about this in more depth later when I show some code, but I highly, highly recommend you guys, because I'm not going to get as deep into it, check out Jack Harrington's video on server components. He does an amazing job of breaking down the sort of steel man case for why these are so good. He shows a bunch of examples of why it makes so much more sense in this new model to just be able to say, okay, fetch my to-dos here at the top and then print them all and then print them all out down here. It's a great model and it makes a lot of sense. And it really does kind of feel like magic, but the thing is, these are just regular React components that execute on the server and can and can connect to our database. And then on the client side of where we need to get reactivity, our effects, our state, all that stuff, then down here have our client components, and these client components can get data passed down into them from server components. So we could go in here, we could fetch all of our to-dos, but if on one of the to-dos you need to go ahead and have some like state variable manipulation stuff, we pass that data down into our client component and our data flows like this. So it's flowing through a bunch of React components. It's just that some of these React components execute on the server. Some of these React components execute. Well, again, it's not, it's not a clear line, but for the sake of argument, I'm going to say some of these React components execute on the client. So that's the sort of model for how Next.js data flows. And you'll notice there's no like dedicated data fetching backend route. We can obviously have like a server directory or whatever where we have functions, which will call the data, which just wrap the database calls and stuff, which we then call within our server components. But it's still basically just directly going in a, in a React component querying our database. And this is one of the things that's confused me the most about a lot of the server component drama and stuff is like, this is a dream. Like when I back when I started doing Next.js and I started doing React two years ago, I would have loved to have been able to go in my component and just grab stuff from my database. It makes so much sense. It's such a great model for building full stack apps or even just querying a separate backend. I mean, if you have a separate backend team, you could still just replace this little Drizzle logo with a little Golang backend. We fetch our stuff up there. It works. Now, 
Let's talk about how Svelkit does this. And Svelkit does do this differently. Svelkit, instead of having like server components, having pages that render on the server, which again, they do, but just, you know what I'm saying. Instead of having pages which run on the server, we have a load function. So we're gonna have our plus uh, page.server.ts. Whoops. We're gonna have our page.server.ts and this page.server.ts is gonna have a load function in it. Whenever we go to a page, this load function is gonna fire. This load function is basically just a get request, which is called on mount. It's very similar to get server side props from old Next.js. And this will connect to our database. This will fetch our data, and then it will send it down to our client side code, which is our page.svelte. So we send it down to our page.svelte. We do this, and now we have our data. But the thing is, we're not rendering UI and stuff up here. This is not executing, this is not UI code. This is purely just a load function versus this can actually be UI code. And this can also be reused because there is some nuance here, which I didn't get into, where technically we could go down here and, uh, whoops, let's make that blue. Uh, we could go down here and we could have a another just server component chilling down in here. We could just put another server component down here and you can do some wild stuff with that. If you imagine a UI where we have like a nav bar and then we have a sidebar or whatever, we can reuse that sidebar over and over again and we can just have all the data fetching logic built into it and we can just reuse it over and over and over again because that's really cool. Again, check out Jack Harrington's video. He does a great job of explaining this in depth. Um, in Svelte, we can't quite do that as much. It's very much just taking, okay, here's a page and here's a load function on that page and we can do stuff. So we have these two different models. Which one do I personally prefer? I personally prefer the Svelkit model. To me, it makes a ton of sense to, on a website, go from page to page. When you hit a page, you fetch some data. That's just kind of makes a lot of sense to me. That's kind of what PHP used to be back in the day. But if you look over here at, um, this is the full stack e-commerce site I've been working on. If we look here at our products page, so this is our products route. I have my page.svelte and I have my page.server.ts. So there's a really clear distinction here where it's like, okay, this page.svelte, this is the client side code, which renders out the page, does all this stuff. And then I have up here at the top, I have this nice little export let data. This export let data is how I'm actually grabbing the data out of my load function, fully type safe and end type safety, which both of these get. One of the problems with old Next.js and get server side props is type safety was a bitch on that. It's not really a problem anymore because we're literally querying out of the database in the clients, in the components. So it makes a ton of sense. But then if you go over here, I have my nice little, um, page.server.ts, and I know that all of the different server-side actions and load functions which are associated with this page are just right here. So I know that whenever this page is loaded, I'm also gonna grab everything in this load function so I just can get everything we need in here. And to me, that makes a lot of sense and that works really well. This is a little different from Next.js, wherein if I was on my home page, so I was in my root directory page.tsx, if I wanted to do const data equals await uh, wait fetch data imagine that function exists i can now just use this data within this i can now just use this data within this component right away it's all wrapped in together and this creates a really nice system where we can go into our like this example here of this slow load add this asynchronous load function which i can go down in here i can call this and then we can return this data if we look at this site um live here uh, i'll give it a second to load we go here it'll say loading feed it's going to take five seconds and then at the end of it we have just loaded that feed. And the way I'm able to accomplish that is with these suspense boundaries, with this nice little slow load and the fallback. It all just works. We're fetching the data directly in what is the UI component. And a lot of people like that. For me personally, I do like this separation. I like having my load function up here and then having my client side stuff down here. It just makes sense. Another really cool thing which I wanted to show off which you can do with the Svelkit model is we, since we have these page.server.ts files and we have these load functions, whenever we go to a root, this load function will fire. So that means that we can put a lot of the like checks and stuff for that root in that load function. A great example of this is authentication. So like in the e-commerce site, if you go to the login page, if you're already logged in, we don't want you just go into the login page again. We want to redirect you to the profile page and we can do that in the load function. It's like you have this server side method which will run every time you go to the page and it's just there. We can do that same thing in Next that does totally work. You can make that happen with the server actions or with the server components, sorry, but for me, I really like the way this sort of works. I like having access to these. 
Another important thing to talk about here is going to be the way you can run server actions and you can run post requests to your server to mutate and handle data. I'm not going to go too deep into this one because to be honest, it's fairly similar between the two. They both support progressive enhancement. It's basically just in next world, we have these functions which we can call, which are always run on the server. We can pass in form data to these. We can handle these with progressive enhancement, do all that different stuff. Um, you can see I'm just using the docs right here because they have a really good example of basically just like right here. We have this create function. It will execute on the server. We can pass this into our client components, handle it there. It's just functions in JS, which we can fire. Svelkit is a little bit different. These in Svelkit, they work more like just kind of HTTP post requests, and they're also very heavily tied to forms. They're called form actions for a reason. In Svelkit, the form actions are very heavily tied to forms. If you look right here, I'm grabbing my form data, I'm validating it, doing all this stuff and running all this stuff. It's basically just the post request to update the basics of a product. If we go back to our page.svelte here, you can see all we're doing here is we're just saying, okay, we have this form, it's method post, and whenever we submit this form, it's going to call the form action, which is attached to this root. So we have these actions, which are heavily tied to these pages. And that's kind of the theme of Svelkit is everything is we have these like sections in these pages and they have load functions and actions, which, um, which are all kind of just grouped together, which we can use in this really nice link. We have our server side stuff and our client side stuff. They can communicate back and forth really well. And I really, really like how it feels. And if we go back to our page.svelte here, you can see it's not just a basic form post request. We can also use the enhance, we can also add the use enhance directive to have basically a callback here, which will overwrite the redirect or whatever we want to do. We won't reload the page when we submit this form. We'll submit it, we'll do all our stuff, and then we'll grab our result down here. We can check if the result is successful. Then we can do a bunch of UI logic here without having to completely refresh the page. So we get the benefits of being able to update stuff in the client, do optimistic updates, all that kind of stuff. We could run optimistic updates up here when it runs. All that stuff just works while also getting the benefits of having these just kind of be normal form actions. We can do all that stuff in here. We can get our optimistic updates. We can return our data. We can, uh, we can mutate our data afterwards, or we can just use these as normal post requests to our server, which would be form submit events. It all just works super well. And to me, it's super intuitive. I love the way this works. And to close this video, I want to talk about the two underlying frameworks for these big meta frameworks. And that'd be Svelte and React. This is one place where I really don't have a super strong opinion. <clears throat> I am not at all super anti react. I think react works super well. The strong primitives are great. The libraries and ecosystem is fantastic. It has its quirks. Use effects kind of sucks. I kind of hate it, but like I've built production apps with react many times. It works really well. I don't, to be honest, I didn't make the decision that I prefer Svelte over react or over Next.js because of react versus Svelte. I think Svelte is great. Um, I know some people have a problem with the like, um, I know some people have a problem with the hijacking of JS and some weird stuff it does where we have like this each directive where, which is not, which is kind of weird. And when I started, I did have to look this up a lot, but you know, once you get used to it, it's really not a big deal. Same thing with the if statements. I get it. It's kind of weird. It's not like JSX, whereas it is just JavaScript, which returns a bunch of tags. I, you know, I get why people don't like that. And I also totally get the argument against it where just having these random state datas, these random state variables floating around that are not explicitly bound can be a problem, but that's all getting fixed in Svelte 5. So it's really not that big of a deal. And to be honest, the biggest difference for between the two of them for me, and this is a super niche use case, which probably doesn't even apply to you, is that I don't like the virtual DOM in React because I have to use libraries which don't interact well with the virtual DOM. So I don't want to deal with that. And Svelte doesn't have to deal with that. So building stuff in Svelte makes more sense. But and I, I guess another thing, too, would be the sort of like UI library and the uh, the big argument that people make against Svelte or any of these different frameworks is that their ecosystem isn't good. And I can tell you from experience, I built production apps in both SvelteKit and in Next.js. The ecosystem in both of them is fantastic. Obviously, Next ecosystem is beyond Svelte's, but everything I needed was here. ShadCN for Svelte works great. Lucia, great authentication library. Uh, for the database, we have Drizzle. That works in both of them. We have all of the different things you would need to build an app. There's no ecosystem problems in Svelte right now. I think maybe we need to create some better systems for bootstrapping apps, and there could definitely be more templates and more guides and more stuff like that. But, you know, 
as far as looking for like UI components and things to make it work better, there's no shortage. I think Svelte is just fine in that department and obviously Next.js is fine in that department. So to close this video, I wanna say this. Both of these frameworks are excellent. They work really well. They do a really great job of solving the problem and you can build fantastic production grade apps in both of them. I personally prefer SvelteKit. It makes the most sense for me. I sort of talked about why, I hope that makes sense. I built stuff with it. I'm gonna continue building stuff with it. Next, but Next.js is still a really good option. If you haven't given server components a try or any of these different things, give it a shot. Try building something in both of these and see which one is more ergonomic to you because genuinely I think at this point, these are all getting so good and I think Vue or Next.js and Vue is in this bucket too. I think these are all getting so good to the point where it's really just pick which one is your favorite and then run with that. There's no objective best pick here and I think that's really awesome. So if you guys enjoyed this, Make sure you like and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon.